Abstract classes can be a really confusing concept when you're learning Java. When I was learning, they were pretty confusing for me. But in this video, we're going to go over exactly what an abstract class is, how you make one, and how you can use one with an example, and why you would want to make one in the first place. We'll also talk about the differences between abstract classes and interfaces. My name's John. I'm a lead Java software engineer, and I love sharing what I've learned in a clear, understandable way. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. I also have a full Java course available in a link down in the description if you're interested. So first things first, what is an abstract class. All an abstract class is, is a class that you can't instantiate. You can't create objects from abstract classes. So what does that mean? Well, you know, if you have like a normal class like this cat class here, if you want, you can create objects of that class. So you could say cat, my cat equals new cat. But with abstract classes, you can't do this. So if I go back into my cat class and make it a public abstract class. If I go back into my main method, I can see that now I get an error here. Cannot instantiate the type and by the way, this abstract keyword here in the class definition is the only thing you need to make a class into an abstract class. Probably the first question that comes to mind is why the heck would I want to do that? Why would I want to make a class that I can't create objects from? So here's a situation where it makes sense to use an abstract class. Let's change this cat class back into a regular class. And instead of just being a standalone class, let's say it extended a class called animal. And let's say the animal class had a couple of fields like int age and string name. It totally makes sense that you could have an animal class that would have subclasses of actual animals like cat, dog, horse, whatever. And it makes sense that you could create objects of those subclasses, like you could create a cat object. But what doesn't make a whole lot of sense is creating an animal object. You know, it's just kind of weird. What kind of animal is it? So you might want a parent class like animal so that your subclasses can share some fields like age, name, and maybe some methods that you write. But you might not want to be able to create objects of this animal class. All you have to do is make this class abstract. So an abstract class is a class you can't instantiate, but you can absolutely make subclasses of an abstract class that can be instantiated. Now, what about abstract methods? In any of your abstract classes, you can choose to have abstract methods. Let's say we had a method like public void make noise. Now, of course, it makes sense for an animal to be able to make noise, but each individual animal is going to make noise in its own way. A cat's going to meow, a dog is going to bark. So because of that, it might not make a whole lot of sense to actually implement this method make noise here in your abstract animal class. What you can do is make this method an abstract method. When you make a method abstract, you don't specify a body for the method. All you do is declare it and then end it with a semicolon. But then in all the child classes of your abstract class, you have to actually create an implementation of this make noise method. So if we go back over to our cat class now, we can see that it's giving us an error that uh, the type cat must implement the inherited abstract method make noise. So of course we can write it all out, but we can also just use Eclipse's uh, fix tool here to add the unimplemented method. But now this cat class can implement this make noise method however we want. Print out Meow. So because this animal class declares an abstract method make noise, any child class of this animal class has to provide its own make noise implementation. So now back in our main method, we could take my cat and call meow. And if we run our program, we can see that it says meow. Now, of course, we could in our animal class, you know, get rid of this abstract method. And in our cat class, just declare a make noise method that says meow. And if we go back and run our program again, it still says meow. So why do we need this abstract method? What do we want that for? What the abstract class does as a whole is kind of enforce and organize exactly what every subclass of animal has to have. So this animal class is saying, hey, if you want to create a new type of animal, it's going to have an age, it's going to have a name, and it has to be able to make noise. Every type of animal might make noise in completely different ways, but this makes sure that every single animal type is able to make noise. As a side note though, in your abstract class, all of the methods don't necessarily have to be abstract. You can create actual concrete implemented methods in your abstract classes. So you could have like public void print name just prints my name is name. So now every subclass of animal will also have this print name method available to it. But since it's not abstract, they don't need to implement it themselves. They can just use the implementation that's here. The question a lot of people have, and what's actually also a big interview question, is what's the difference between an abstract class and an interface? So let's say we had an interface called like animal stuff. Here in an interface, we could say, how about public void poop? So just like every animal might make noise in different ways, every animal is probably also going to poop in different ways. In interfaces, you don't need an abstract keyword in your methods. Every method in an interface is assumed to be abstract, so you, uh, you don't need this keyword. As you probably know, if you want to implement an interface, so all you have to do is instead of uh, extending uh, another class, you just say implements the interface, which is 
animal stuff. And now that we implement this animal stuff interface, we have to implement this poop method. You see right now we get an error that says uh, the type cat must implement the inherited abstract method poop. And we can just click the suggestion here to add the unimplemented method, print out uh, like <laughs> Sounds pretty poopy. So just like this abstract make noise method made any subclass implement this make noise method, this interface also makes any classes that implement the interface implement this method. So they seem like they're doing the same thing, right? What's the difference? The first key difference is that you can implement as many interfaces as you want in Java. There's no limit, but you can only extend one class and you can totally do both if you want to. You can extend the animal class and implement the animal stuff interface. Another difference is that in interfaces, if you declare any fields, like if you had int age and string name, every field that's declared inside an interface is going to be static and final. That's why I'm getting an error here. Because it's final, I have to instantiate it with some kind of a value. Larry. Because every field in an interface is automatically static, that means the same values apply to every object in that class. If I say age equals one, that would have to apply to every class that implements this interface. So it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have fields like this inside interfaces. That's why we have uh, abstract classes like this. So you can say, hey, every animal has to have an age and a name, but I'm not going to tell you what it is right now because that doesn't make sense. Each individual cat object, dog object, and horse object can all have their own age and name values. So you can do that with an abstract class, but not with an interface. So you might want to create an abstract class if you have a lot of closely related classes that you want to have the same functionality and the same types of fields available, but you might want to make an interface instead if you have a lot of unrelated classes that you all want to be able to do a certain thing. That makes it so you can guarantee that other types of classes will be able to poop even if they aren't animals. That might be the weirdest sentence ever said in a Java tutorial. If you have any questions or clarifications, let me know in the comments. Or if I got something wrong, feel free to shout and rant at me angrily. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.